As a kid, I could sit for hours just browsing through the Guinness Book of World Records. And there, squeezed in among sports records, long rivers and the world's tallest man was a number so large that I still don't understand it. The world's largest number. As a kid, I found this number magical and mystical. And as a grown-up, I've become a scientist with a PhD in mathematics, devoting my time to untangling and understanding complex information. It is time to return to the roots. So I've decided to go on a road trip in California, chasing the world's largest number. I fell head over heels in love with the universe as a kid. So vast it's impossible to grasp, so magical it's impossible not to try. When chasing the world's largest number, the universe is a natural place to start looking. Distances in the universe are enormous, but since we're not used to relating to such vast distances, let us shrink the universe down to a size we can more easily understand. If the Earth were an orange, the moon would be like a strawberry two meters off, and the sun like a full-size luxury sedan a couple of football fields further away. And the nearest star to our own sun would be 160 million meters away, the same as four times around the Earth. The Earth, the Sun and all the stars in the sky are in a galaxy with a name as poetic as the Milky Way. The Milky Way is like a spinning starfish floating in the universe. From arm to arm, it spans over a billion trillion meters. When numbers have that many zeros, we can use a special compact notation system to help us out. A billion trillion has 21 zeros. 10 to the power of 21. I firmly believe that there are places in the universe where intelligent life exists, but will we ever be visited by them or be able to visit them? I think that's highly unlikely, because the distances are just simply just too great. The enormous distances mean that traveling through the universe takes a long time, even when traveling as fast as possible, at the speed of light. Light travels so fast that when you flick the switch, it seems like it's already there. Light travels around the globe seven and a half times in one second. In one year, it travels over 10 million billion meters. But even at that speed, light uses two and a half million years to reach our nearest galaxy. So if we wanted to communicate with our neighboring galaxy, even in the fastest possible way, it would take five million years. Civilizations would come and go before we'd even received a response to our first hello. To me, the universe is so large. There is no way to comprehend how big it is. It's 10 to the power of 27 meters to the edge of the universe. That's the one with 27 zeros behind it. It's an incomprehensibly large number. But when chasing the world's largest number, it's only the beginning. However, in order to get larger numbers, we need to think smaller.
The Milky Way consists of 200 billion stars, many of them center of their own solar system. Our own sun, a blazing ball in the sky, is a million times bigger than Earth. So if we divide up the sun into Earth-sized pieces, the number one becomes the number one million. As we chase the world's largest number, we can take something big and divide it up into many smaller pieces. One human being, one body. We can cut off the legs, arms and head, and one body has become six pieces. We can cut off hands, fingers, feet and toes, and now one body has become 30 pieces. And we can keep going, we can cut off every tooth, every nail, every strand of hair. Smaller and smaller pieces, larger and larger numbers. Blood cells, skin cells, brain cells. A human being consists of one quadrillion cells, a million billion. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, consists of a mere 200 billion stars. There are more cells in the human body than there are stars in the sky. If we keep on dividing, dividing and dividing, we will eventually get to the building blocks of the universe, the atoms. You want to count the largest number is count atoms. Atoms the planet is made out of? Atoms? They can't even see them. They're so small. Atoms are way smaller than what we can see with the naked eye. They're the building blocks of everything that's alive and everything that's dead. A star, a human body, a cup of coffee. If we count every single atom in the universe, we get to the number 10 to the power of 80. That's a one with 80 zeros behind it. There's not much more left to count. To get even larger numbers, we have to move beyond simply counting and measuring the physical world. We need to start thinking bigger. We need to think bigger than the universe. We humans count. We count the stars in the sky when we're young and money in the bank when we get older. When chasing the world's largest number, we can count whatever there's a lot of. You should count miles, probably. I would say it's sand, dirt. But, you know, you could, I mean, look at that tree, the leaves on the tree. If you count up all the willows in the Sierra Nevada, the range of light in California. Insects. Blessings. Probably grains of dirt. Rolls of toilet paper. <laughs> sand. You should count sand. But even counting grains of sand will eventually end. If we count every grain of sand on the planet, every cell in the human body, every atom in the universe, we get to the number 10 to the power of 80. A one with 80 zeros behind it. To get even larger numbers, we need to stop counting things and rather count possibilities. For my California road trip, I have packed 256 outfits, and they all fit into a small black bag. Four scarves, four t-shirts, four pairs of pants, and four pairs of shoes. A total of 16 garments, but they can be combined in 256 different ways. The number of possible combinations is much larger than the actual number of garments. A journey with two destinations, San Francisco and LA, has two possible routes. First San Francisco and then LA, or LA first and then San Francisco. journey with three destinations, San Francisco, LA and San Diego, has six possible routes. San Francisco, LA, San Diego, San Francisco, San Diego, LA, 
LA, San Diego, San Francisco, LA, San Francisco, San Diego, San Diego, LA, San Francisco, or San Diego, San Francisco, LA. Four destinations, 24 possibilities. Five destinations, 120 possibilities. And with 10 destinations, almost 4 million possible routes. The number of possibilities grows tremendously fast. A band on a world tour playing at a hundred venues has an inconceivable 10 to the power of 157 possible itineraries, or one with 157 zeros behind it. A world tour has more possible itineraries than there are atoms in the entire universe. Counting possibilities leads to massive numbers, but we can get even larger numbers if we turn our gaze inward, inside our heads. Think of a number. A large number. An even larger number. What is the largest number you can think of? The largest number I can think of? Um, Millions, I guess. I don't know. Does a billion count? <laughs> a trillion, you know, but I wouldn't know how to write it. A trillion? Um, a billion? To a trillion. Gazillion. Gazillion! Ah, uh, we got gazillion. <laughs> I guess a Google would be the biggest number that I could think of. Google. How large is that? <sighs> and actually, when I, you, you tell me these things, I think of my grandson, because little kids are really love numbers. Nine-year-old Milton was strolling around the park with his uncle, a mathematician, thinking of large numbers. Milton thought of the number one the hundred zeros behind it. He called the number Google. Can you count to one million? To one billion? Can you count to a Google? Let's try. One, two, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At this rate, it'll take us more than 11 days to count to a million. To count to a billion would take more than 30 years. The known universe is 14,000 million years old. Counting to Google would take 300 million 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 years. My old computer counts 200 million numbers per second. It counts to 1 billion in 5 seconds. But even at that speed, the machine wouldn't be able to count to Google this year, or in the next decade, or within the lifespan of the universe. The number Google has a hundred zeros. But let's think even bigger. Let's think of a number with Google zeros. This number has its own name. Googleplex. While the zeros in Google can be written on a piece of paper, the universe just isn't big enough for Googleplex. If you write down all the zeros in Googleplex on regular sheets of paper, they would fill 600 billion universes. Googleplex is not only a mind-numbingly large number, it's also a completely new type of number. It's a power tower. We're getting closer to the world's largest number. A 
As a kid, I could sit for hours browsing through the Guinness Book of World Records. And there, squeezed in among sports records, long rivers and the world's tallest man, was a number so large that I still don't understand it. The world's largest number. Graham's number. The largest number I can think of is... The largest number? Ah. A hundred billion? Seven trillion. National debt. Ten trillion. A thousand trillion? The large numbers mathematicians work with are so much larger than the numbers we're used to that they quickly become difficult to grasp. When chasing the world's largest number, it's not enough to simply keep adding zeros. We need to think differently, just like the man behind the world's largest number did, Ronald Graham. But in the kind of mathematics I'm involved in, you get numbers that are so much larger, you can't even use that standard notation to write them down. You have to invent some new notation just to kind of capture uh, the size of these numbers. They're so big, it's really hard to, to grasp. It means you can't, you can't compare these numbers with the normal numbers we're used to. Graham's number is so large that the universe is simply too small for us to write it down. So no one has ever seen it, not even Graham. But even if we cannot write down Graham's number, we can describe how to arrive at it. To explain Graham's number, we can use the staircase method. It's a staircase where the steps get larger and larger, depending on the calculation method. What is the largest number you can make with three number threes? On the first step, we can add them. Three plus three plus three is nine. On the second step, we can multiply them. Three times three times three, which is 27. And the step has gotten bigger. If we build a power tower with the three threes, we get a huge jump to the next step. Three raised to the power of three to the power of three is more than 7,000 billion. The distance up to the number at the fourth step is so large that there are hardly any words that can actually describe it. Graham's number is 64 steps further up. It is a number so large that we simply do not have enough brain cells to wrap our minds around it. Graham's number is the largest number ever to be used in a mathematical proof. It is so large that we can't write it down, we can't compare it with anything, and we can't even imagine it. Still, we can imagine something even bigger than Graham's number. We can imagine infinity. It's easy to feel small when looking out into the universe. It's easy to imagine that the universe is infinite and that infinity is the world's largest number. But infinity is not a big number. It's not a number. Infinity is an idea. The idea of something that never ends. Oh, uh, well, infinity is just uh, so far out, you just, you know, it's just out there. I think of the symbol. Yeah. It never stops. Endless. Like that? Infinity is a concept that can be challenging to understand. Something that never ends. Something that goes on and on and on. A good starting point for thought experiments. The chances of winning the lottery are very small. What if you got to play a billion trillion times? If you get to play enough times, you'll be guaranteed to win at any game of chance. In fact, if you could try an infinite number of times, you wouldn't just win once, you'd win an infinite number of times. Humans exist, which means that the chance of life in the universe is greater than zero. So if the universe is infinite, it means that not only is there life, but there is an infinite amount of life out there. 
I exist. Which means that the chance that I may exist in the universe is greater than zero. So if the universe is infinite, it means that not only do I exist, but there is an infinite number of me out there. Never ending. Everlasting. Forever. Endless. Forever. No end. Everlasting. Jesus. Heaven. Oh yeah. Uh, blackness, endless, endless blackness. On and on and on. There's no end. Is that something we just put in place when we don't exactly know? We cannot count to infinity. We cannot calculate to infinity. Infinity is an idea constructed by humans. The idea of something that goes on and on and on.